Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to change the DV Shop Modules mobile column breakpoint. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start off by uh, going to our theme builder. So I'm going to come all the way down here and select theme builder. So here we're going to create a brand new template and we are going to target our shop page. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and I'm going to scroll down here and find my shop and click on create template. Now, before I begin, I've already gone ahead and added all my products over here in WooCommerce. And also, if you haven't downloaded WooCommerce, make sure you go and download WooCommerce. And then finally, if you want to just download this template, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below where you can just go and just download the template and use it. And also, it, the template has the image that we're going to be using in this tutorial. All right, so now that we have uh, added our shop template here, let's add our custom body by clicking here on add custom body, build custom body. So before we add anything here, we're just going to start from scratch and go into our section settings. So I'm going to come all the way down here, to, I mean, all the way up here to the top and click on this gear icon to go into my section settings. Now over here on the section settings, we need to go to the background because we need to stylize this main part of the background. So let's add a gradient by clicking on the second tab and then clicking on this plus button. So I'm going to add my first color here by clicking on my first color and then replacing these values here with my values. Next, I'm going to add my second color. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Click over here and this is going to give me access to add my hexadecimal value here for my second color. Now, before I continue, if you'd like to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so moving on, uh, this gradient type is going to be linear, but the gradient direction is going to be 109 degrees. So this now brings this, uh, this design that we have right here. Okay, so moving on, now that we have the uh, gradient, the next step now is to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here to my third tab, click on the plus button, and this is the image that you get when you download the template. So it comes with the image. So I'm going to click here on upload image. And this is the style that we have there in the image. Now we have to do a few customizations here. So for the background image position or background image size, we need to make sure that this is set to fit because as you can see here, it was pixelated and now it is looking much better. Right, so the next thing we're going to do here is to go to our spacing. So I'm going to click here on design spacing. So we're going to start off here with adding our margin and this is going to be 50 pixels. And then we also need to add a left and a right margin. And again, this is going to be 50 pixels. And then uh, over here on the padding, we're going to set our padding bottom here to 150. Oops. Okay, there we go. Next, we're going to go to the borders because we want to add some rounded corners here. So what you're going to do is to make sure that you have all the sides selected and then just add 20 here because 20 pixels is going to be the size for our rounded corners. And then once we've done that, the next step now is to save and add a brand new row by clicking over here on this plus button. So here on the rows, we're going to go with a single column. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And in that column, we are going to add a text module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Great. So now that we have this, I'm going to highlight all this text here and uh, just get rid of it and add my text, which just says shop. And I'm going to highlight this as well and change this text to heading one. And now that I've set it like that, I'm going to go in and customize it. So I'm going to click here on design heading text and uh, making sure you're on the heading one tab. I'm going to change my font here from default to a font called Prata. Now, this font is absolutely free, so you can go ahead and uh, use these. Right, so the next stage here is to align our heading. So I'm going to come over here and align it center. And then I'm going to change my color because right now this doesn't look great on this background. So let's choose our color here and uh, let's go with white. Now it's time to set our heading text size. So I'm going to come over here, change this from 30 to 80. So we want it nice and big. But while we're here as well, we might as well go in and change our sizes for our other devices. So here I'm going to set it to 60 on the tablet. And then on the phone, we're going to set this to 40. Okay, so now this looks much better on these three devices. 
So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to go ahead and save and then it's time to add another section. So I'm going to click here on a regular. Now, before I go in and add my columns and all that, I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on advanced position and on my Z index here, I'm going to set this to two. Now I can save this and then I'm going to go in and add my row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, single column. And before I go in and uh, do quite a lot of work in there, I'm just going to go in and add my background color here to my row. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and I'm going to go to background and set my background to white. And I know I've used white before, so I'm going to go ahead and click here on recent and then choose my white color. Now let's set our width. So to do that, we need to go into our design tab. And here we're going to go to sizing. And our width here is set to 80%. So we want this to go all the way to 100%. But on the maximum width, we're going to set this to 1380 pixels. Now let's work on our padding. So I'm going to click, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go to spacing. So here I'm going to add a top margin of 200 and a top padding of 50. And this, let's add the same value for the bottom as well. And then for the left and right, we're going to set this to 100. And I'm just going to add this chain here. So my same value is applied to both sides. Now, while we're here, uh, you know, this is a rule of thumb. You always need to go into your mobile views and make sure you optimize them as well so that your website looks great on all devices. All right. So now I'm going to go in here and uh, for the tablets and phone, I'm going to set my right and left padding to 20. Go ahead and add it there. And I'm also going to go into my padding bottom here and uh, I'm going to set this to 20 as well. So pretty much uh, this same value here is going to be on the tablet as well, as well on the, on the phone. Okay, so back over here to my desktop, I can see everything is looking great. Now, the next step now is to add my border. So I'm going to go to and scroll down here to border. And here we're going to add our rounded corners. Now, remember, we used 25. So I'm going to go in and add 25 over here. And now we're going to have our rounded corners. Okay, so um, there's one thing that I forgot to add here. On here on, um, on our spacing, this top margin here is supposed to be minus 200. There we go. So now our shape is within this green area here on the top, which is great. Right, so for the next step, we're going to add our blur strength. So I'm gonna come over here and choose our box shadow, because that's where we can get our blur strength. So I'm gonna choose here my first column and I'm gonna add my blur strength of 50 pixels. And then I'm going to change my color over here. So this color, again, I'm gonna link it to the post in the show notes below. So we just want a very slight shadow here. This is why I've added 0.00.1. .00 Okay, so now that we have our shadow color, the next step now is to add our shop module. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna click here on this plus button to add our module. So I'm gonna search for our shop and select it. So here on our columns, I'm gonna click on this drop down on the column layout, I'm gonna set this to four. Now notice that I already have products in here and this is what you need to do if you don't see any products showing here. Now, as you can see, this is how it comes out by default from the, uh, from the theme builder. So what we need to do is to customize this and just brand it to make it look like our own design. So to do that, we're going to come over here to design and then we're gonna to go to overlay. So here on overlay, let's start with our overlay icon color. So I'm gonna click here and paste my color in here. Next, I'm going to go to my overlay background color. So here, I'm gonna start with um, clicking here and I'm just gonna drag this down a little bit because the color I'm going to use is an RGBA value, which means it has transparency. So this is why you need to drag this down a little bit. Now I'm gonna paste my color here, my color values between the brackets like that. So it's important that you do it this way. Now, if I mouse over this area, you can see here we have this slight transparency, which is great. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to add our rounded corners. So I'm gonna scroll down here to image and then over here on uh, image rounded corners, I'm gonna set this to 10 pixels. Now notice what happens here. Now this just pretty much changes the default way this shop module looks. So this is why we are going ahead and customizing it. 
Great. So now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and add our shadow to our image. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go and choose my shadow. And then I'm going to add my colors. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drag this a little bit and paste my values here between the brackets like that. So you can see now the shadow is just very, very uh, slight. And this is what we're aiming for. Right, so now that we have this in place, we need to add our title text settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here and search for my title. And here we go, title text. So font here is going to be Prata. And uh, let's also change our text size. So currently, it's a bit too small for our headings. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 30 pixels. So now you can see it's nice and big. And what I may also want to do is to change the sizes for my tablet and my phone. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'm going to go into tablet and in tablet mode, I'm going to set this to 25. And then on the phone, I'm going to set this to 20. Great. So now that my text sizes are all set, the next thing we need to do is to go to our price text settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to scroll down here. So I'm going to go to price text and here we're going to change our font to monster at and we're going to set our font weight here to medium. And let's also change our size. So here we have 14. I'm going to set this to 18. And then for the tablet, I'm going to set this to 16. And for the phone, I'm going to set this to 14. Great. So back over here to my normal view. Let's add some padding to this. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to spacing. And our padding here top is going to be 50 pixels. So I mean, we just want to give some space over here because everything looks so cramped. So that slight change makes this look much better. Okay. So once we've completed this overall shop design, it's time now to modify the shop module column breakpoint using CSS. So we'll add some CSS code to the code module inside our design. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a code module. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for, in fact, it's right here. I'm going to choose my code and then I'm going to add my CSS code. Now, in your case, if you want to use the exact same CSS code as I'm using here, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below so you can go ahead and use this exact CSS code. This saves you from going in and just typing it all out because chances are you're going to make a mistake and this won't work. So I'll leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've added our CSS code, save all the changes and let's preview this design. So I'm going to save here and then I am going to save this design. I'm going to close this and save changes one more time. All right, so now let's take a look at our page. So I'm gonna come over here to this tab, I'm gonna refresh this, and pretty much this is our main shop landing page. Now, if I make this browser size smaller, you can see that our breakpoint is now working perfectly. So go ahead and try it out and see how it works for you. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.